Behind the Counter is sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. And hello and welcome once again to another fine star-studded episode of Behind the Counter. I am your host, America's sweetheart, Rich Stambolian, and with me as always is America's black heart, Jonathan Adler. I think I'm trying to defuse a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little headphones aren't working? Uh, yeah. Set the timer. <laughs> we have two minutes before we die. <laughs> <laughs> this room's going to get filled with gas. <laughs> All right, what's going on, man? You know. I know. Right, well fed. We got to talk real fast. We're doing a special short show tonight. Yes. Um, and where we do excel, we excel at speed. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible lovers. <laughs> poor, poor lovers. Ah, uh, so uh, I already asked you what's going on. I, yeah, we covered that part. You never asked me what's going on. Uh, I don't ask no. me about this last week. What mm-hmm. the. F- fuck is going on <laughs> oh no no can we rewind that <laughs> um, that's why i don't ask what's going on because i get really excited about all it. right so for future reference john will never ask me what's going on because it comes out poorly <laughs> um for the, the f- record nothing's really going what on what the frick is going on my band's got a rock and roll show tonight yes at the trash bar you should guys have come by shameless plug um we will be there yes I will be emceeing the night. Yeah. If listen, if if Tony can't make it, then um, I would be paying learning bass really quick. Can I, have to play, I have to do a. I can do the hand thing. clap. That's as far as. <laughs> I can. Just come on stage and be yeah, the MC. I can do that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can do that, and uh, I can I can try and puff myself up and look fatter. Can we give you the? Uh, <laughs> we'll have none of that on the show. We put the horn in the bell away for the for our show. Can we give you a microphone just so you can do the uh, do yeah. the hip hop MC? Yeah, I'll do that. Wow, wow, wow. I'll, do that. I'll do all of that for you. Awesome. So a uh, little bit of news for everybody this week. We finally have news after a drought of news. Um, no news. They do well. It, uh, uh, this could be considered news. It's um. Uh, there's a lot of speculations are running rampant about the uh, Spider Men. <laughs> possible Spider-Man crossover. Touch, uh, yeah, touch his face a little bit. The weird thing about <laughs> ah, <laughs> the uh, the weird thing is is that uh, when the big big Watchmen announcement came, uh, Marvel's response was to put a weird poster up of uh, said Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and which is like split down the middle, just like two different Spider-Man symbols. So speculation began, and it's and we just found out today. Mm-hmm. That it's Bendis and uh, what's the young lady's name? Uh, Sarah Pacelli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who worked on Ultimate Spidey with him yeah. as well. Uh, so people are speculating if this is actually going to be the crossover between Ultimate Spidey and Amazing Spider-Man, which I am hoping it's not. I do, do not th- want that to happen. You have, you have a lot of possibilities. You have um, the Miles right. Morales crossing over with uh, dead Peter Parker. Yeah. You also have regular continuity Peter Parker crossing over with Miles Morales. Which would kind of be okay because they, if you think about the Horizon Lab stuff, it makes yeah. more sense if you see like an interdimensional portal and, you know, he's like, hey, I'm black in this universe. Oh, also, it, it, there's no reason to say it's not um, going to be Spidey and Scarlet Spider. Right, that's true. You know, in, in yeah. some type of capacity. Could um, be anybody. What? Could be yeah, anybody. Return of Ben Riley. I guess with Bendis, though, you kind of have to assume it is Ultimate Spidey in some capacity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, the, the Scarlet Spider symbol is so similar to the uh, to Miles Morales. Um, did I say Ultimate Spidey? The Scarlet Spidey yeah, symbol yeah. Is, is so close to Ultimate Spidey symbol. Yeah. Well, all you have is the uh, that one that silhouette. one shot, the silhouette that says, like, Spider-Man, and it's two... Spideys. Not excited about this at it all. It couldn't even. It could be two Deadpool's for all for all anybody knows. But they know? are saying that this is going to be big news. So okay. I, I guess it would have to be probably like a crossover of some sort. But I wouldn't mind seeing like, mm. uh, like an Ultimate Spidey storyline that has I don't know a time traveling Ultimate Peter Parker meet Miles Morales and teach him a couple lessons. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would like, like for him to remain dead for a while. It could be anything. It could be like an exiles thing, but you know, like you said, it it would it would leave a bad taste in your mouth specifically if it yeah. was um, dead Ultimate Spidey coming back from the grave and then meeting his Blatino rep- like replica. He just started. Yeah, he didn't get webs yet. You know what I'm always afraid of about the uh, the Ultimate Universe is that it it feels like it's coming to an end. 
Yeah. You know? Well, they've killed so many people. They killed so many people. It started off so strong, and they actually created, like, this gigantic universe, and after the whole um, ultimatum thing where Magneto flooded the entire, uh, like, New York City. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people died. And then you have, like, kind of, like, offshoots. You know, you have, like, Ultimate X-Men with Wolverine's kid and, like, a couple of new characters, but it's not as full as it once was. Nope. And um, I honestly think they're just keeping Ultimates going because it's more relatable to the movie than regular Avengers. Well, what is, uh, you're in Ultimate X-Men, you're actually seeing the return of Magneto, so he's not dead. Um, you've mm. seen, the really cool thing was, like, the Reed Richards being, like, a bad guy in this world. Yes. It's very, very awesome. Um, and plus, like, I gotta admit, uh, Ultimate is stepping up its game again. It is. And yeah. starting to, like, get into that really cool, like, the two mm. Zorns and, like, yeah. Ultimate Reed Richards. Some, there's some good stuff happening. There's actually a reason, that, um, last week we were talking about this, and we're both big fans of the Ultimates book. Um, but it's so hard to talk about on air because the story is so, so interwoven. Complicated. It's a completely complicated story about uh, like a future city, which is like hyper evolved coming to Earth, and then Bother. it's completely Too insane. Much. We need to dedicate like, an entire episode just to, like give yeah. the background on that because it's it's also dealing with the like, Ultimate Hawkeye and Ultimate X Men and and Thor and Thor and like so all of it's happening all at once. So it's 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 complicated. And the fact that ev- everybody, every Asgardian who died is inside Thor. At this point, yes, you know, so he is Valhalla. He is Valhalla. walking Valhalla. It's pretty nuts. Um, but check it out. I mean, like it's up to like what, like issue nine or ten? Yeah, they're all like something like that. Yeah, you gotta pick up a trade. Get the ultimate. Get ultimate Spider Man too, everybody. That's awesome. Pick yes. up Spider Man. Spidey, Spidey's been nothing but fantastic. Every Spidey mm. that's come out in the past uh, few months has been super awesome. Super awesome. I, I know that's not a good critical review, but super awesome is. In the yeah. interest of time, we have to yeah. worry about. You have to like condense that. a super awesome it's thesis to two words. That dog's escaping. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we got? We got uh, DC has apparently racked up in the month of February. Every every book in the top ten has been a DC book, with Justice League as number one. Aquaman has outsold every mm-hmm. Marvel book, which is f- friggin' nuts. Just a scary, scary thing. It is. And Aquaman actually beat out Batman Robin, which is a weird little mm. tidbit, too. Um, that will change. Uh, Avengers versus X-Men is going to be such a... Like, Can I ask why you beat him out? People are just interested, man. Yeah. You know. Yes, yeah, Aquaman. Aqu- Aquaman. It's actually a really good book. It is a good book. It is one of the better DC books mm-hmm. out right now. But uh, it's uh, I personally think that they're winning out because the uh, the fan fervor hasn't diminished at this point. And the core books that are good are out of 52 titles, which is kind of sad that there's maybe seven books that are fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, I would say seven. Seven is a good number. Yeah, something like that. Justice League leaves a little bit to be desired, but Batman is by far number one. Yeah. Um, Batman and Robin is also pretty excellent. That book, that book is very good. Batwoman. Three bad books. Yeah. Three bad books. Uh, I was talking to an old friend of mine, and he said that Batwing is his favorite one. And I was like, oh. Okay. Do you think they're gonna work in some uh, some Connie stuff in that way? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> who was who was his mystery friend? Uh, he was a friend. He's a black friend, mm-hmm. and I told him that it was actually because did, did you like the book because it's an African uh, Batman? He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Okay, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Of course, <laughs> didn't he, he didn't uh, um, stammer when you asked him at least. <laughs> <laughs> It's well written, <laughs> Judd Winnick. Um, but yeah, Avengers, uh, Avengers, X Men, which is like, it's it's so weird that these characters have they they live in the same universe and they occasionally share team members. Dude, it's like Superman versus Batman. It's yeah. like you're selling the best, the mm-hmm. biggest possible thing you can do with yeah. a crossover right now. And uh, with Dean Finney Guala for some reason. Exactly. <laughs> but it's it's really cool stuff, and uh, you know we're gonna get to um, like kind of like a lead in later with um, Young Avengers, but. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this book? It, the numbers are, are insane. The no, like it's already yeah. pre it's already outsold. The pre orders have outsold Civil War number one. Yeah, which already. is which is when like the kind of Marvel's ads peak in yeah. in sales figures. Um, what am I looking forward to? I just you know what I'm really looking forward to a really awesome Captain America Cyclops mm-hmm. battle. Yeah. Uh, Hulk versus uh, Colossus Juggernaut. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Uh, who else do we got? I'm also gonna throw up on the air. Uh, <laughs> Who else we got? Uh, you got Wolverine because Wolverine is on both teams. Yeah, so that yeah, we we mm-hmm. don't know how this yeah. that's gonna play out with the whole like other beast school thing. 
Beast, I can see falling on the Avenger side. That dude hates like the X Men for the most part. But I think he's gonna come shining through in true Beast fashion, saying he's gonna like, die. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think they can die. kill Beast because he they already put that him through. Been around for a while. That exactly they done they've mm-hmm. pretty much killed all like the core members at mm-hmm. one point in the last like 10 15 years that dude has made out so many times they've killed cyclops they've mm-hmm. killed gene gray ice wolverine. man wolverine but i'm saying that the core five did uh, angel died and was reborn yeah. a thousand times class is nightcrawler time for beast man er, Psy- psylocke everybody yeah everybody's not i don't you know what i don't want to die i don't want beast to go simply for the fact that the but, way he's been written lately is fantastic yeah but that's the, that's i think the great part of it if you mm-hmm. kill him at this point it's actually gonna mean something same thing they did with nick nightcrawl the nightcrawl death was awesome yeah yeah you know that was like a surprise and you gave a shit about the the mm-hmm. character um who else would i really like to see falcon i want to see falcon go just, uh, you want to see falcon go yeah. or bite it I'm never a big falcon guy you know, he was never really on the. I can't even even say he was really on the Avengers. But you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna you're gonna have some Scarlet Witch involvement, obviously. Yes. Um, you're well, ha- a lot of stuff has to come to head because if this is Bendis' last run, mm-hmm. um, they also have to work in all this Ultron shit. Right, right. So you have the Ultron stuff, whatever they're doing with Wonder mm-hmm. Man, which is probably gonna lead into Scarlet Witch stuff. Right. Um, Scarlet Witch herself, how Meg Daniels gonna play into this whole thing? Mm-hmm. Quicksilver. You know the whole, all the you know the entire like Maximoff family, right. and then like the schism that's going on with X Men, mm-hmm. and how they you know where they're gonna, gonna fall into it, X Force the murderers, right? How they're yeah, gonna yeah. play into all this stuff, and then you got like the Secret Avengers mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Well, you know, you know what I'm really looking forward to, as cheesy as it may sound, is I want that big spread, like a George Perez style spread of. Like a huge like battle. You have an Avengers assemble where Cap's like, we're getting all the Avengers, and there's a hundred Avengers, and then you'll have the X Men saying like, listen, every single mutant who has, most mutants have been on this team. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna come head to head. I think you're gonna see a lot of crazy characters showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna see a lot of uh, people crossing sides, crossing over, saying like, with idealistic views, you know, because like the Avengers have always been like, we are justice and we are right and we will fix everything. And X Men have always been, we have to protect ourselves from everybody who hates us, but we're gonna do good at the same time. Well, we know all we really know about this is that the linchpin of this whole thing is gonna be you know, the, the arrival of the Phoenix. Right. Um, it's obviously gonna play into some somewhere with hope. Mm-hmm. Um, where she's probably gonna be the you know the the harbinger for all this right. stuff. The catalyst. And I'm su- I'm assuming Jean Grey is gonna come mm-hmm. into play at some point. Um, but we don't really know why the threat is such mm-hmm. a large one. Right. You know, like I don't know if they need to kill like Avengers. Like we're gonna have to you know murder hope to you know stop the Phoenix from mm-hmm. basically raising the crap out of her. It's a good planet. metaphor too. Oh my god I think you stumbled onto That's something it. <laughs> Really obvious writing <laughs> um, Yeah man uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it I think it's gonna be Really kick ass And dude like The creative teams on this Are, just, are so good It's yeah. It's it's a You know It's their brain trust You have Hickman You have Aaron mm-hmm. You have Bendis You have everybody yeah. Fraction you're gonna get some cool stuff, man. Yeah, man. I'm already. I'm like picturing the fights in my head already, which is which is what you want out of a book like this, you know. Yeah. Um, and automatically, for some reason, I'm pitting Daredevil against Wolverine. That's right, right because Daredevil's gonna be in mm-hmm. the in the mix too. Well, they said some characters are getting taken off the board, like uh, Captain Britain is, you know, on Secret uh, Secret Avengers. Right. Um, there's gonna be some space team mm-hmm. that is gonna be guarding like the orbit to stop the Phoenix from arriving. On Earth, mm-hmm. so he's like just off the board, so you don't have to worry about Captain Britain. Yeah, powerhouse. certain characters are going to be like, there's no way they're going to be involved in this stuff. It could also, it, it, besides the death of characters, you could also have returned, uh, and the two big names that pop into my head are possibly Ares, which would probably never nice. happen. It'd be nice. I, I wanted to show up in the Demogorge Thor story. Me um, too. And you have the possible return of Sentry. No, I don't think Sentry's. I think Sentry's off the board for a long period of time. Captain yeah. Marvel's coming back. We know that for a fact. Which Captain Marvel though? Rick Jones? Because I like the Rick Jones Captain Marvel. Like no, I think we're getting like full. Like I all, all I saw was the picture of him in the. Uh, it's you know like the um, the classic like red and blue yeah, with yeah. the hair showing, it, but it's green like the green Cree color. Okay. Um, that's why I'm thinking that they might kill off what's his name uh, Protector. At this point, oh uh, yeah, Novar. Yeah, yeah. Because they really haven't done what they should have been doing. With that He's character. a nice character though. Like I like the character. yeah. But I I I liked him when he was weird Grant Morrison Marvel yeah. boy, and even when he was on Dark Avengers, he was more interesting. Mm-hmm. But um, and plus this was is an opportune time with mm-hmm. DC dropping the uh, the Captain Marvel moniker over and uh, true. So it could kind of play into a factor where 
Well, that'd be a pretty awesome Avengers team if you had a Captain Marvel on the team at this point. That would be awesome. I, I remember a few years ago when they had the um, the invasion stuff, the secret invasion stuff, where you thought they teased the return of Captain Marvel, but it ended up being a, yeah. a brainwashed scroll. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That was, re- that was a good story. Yeah. That was a good story. It was, it was very excellently written where... Um, he shows up and everybody thinks he's back from the dead because he died of cancer in like the 70s. And he turns out that he is the most brainwashed of all scrolls that he believed in this yeah. guy so much that he I bought it. him. I thought it was him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then when they did that reveal in one issue where like he essentially looks in the mirror and he sees like that ugly green alien face and he's like, I, 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 gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go out in a blaze of glory. I would like to see a return of Super Scroll during this. Yes. I don't know why Avengers X-Men, but. If I was in come this, back. This is Marvel's opportunity to throw a lot of everybody in there. Yeah. It is I mean it's their two biggest mm-hmm. franchises. And I, you know what? Um I'd like to see the return of Hawkeye's costume. I'd like to see some more I mean it's it's we've we have more X Men on Avengers teams mm-hmm. than we've ever had. You know, we have Storm who you'd never even think of. Yeah. Uh, you know, Beast Wolvie. Um so there's a lot of opportunity for to get some of those guys mm-hmm. who've kind of been like floundering in X Men yeah. for a long time to kind of uh to move on. Like I think Iceman's a great like Iceman's being handled mm. awesomely in Wolverine X Men, but I would like to see him like on a on Avengers team. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think it's time for more X Men to switch over. Yeah. Because I always like that dynamic. I always like the dynamic. I understood like, why they wouldn't. You know, they're they're dude with powers. I think they're gonna address that, you know? Yeah. Because the X-Men thing is more prideful on one aspect, you know, because it's like I was born a mutant and the Avengers thing is like anybody could be Avenger. You could be a crook and a thief, but as long as you have good in your heart, you can do it. I know what I think would be a, a kick-ass uh, Avenger. Rogue. I think Rogue has done <laughs> all the time she can on X-Men. I think so. Like you've exhausted, you know, whatever she can do. She can control the powers now. Like I think she'd be awesome. Mm. And it would also create some new like romantic dynamics with other characters. Yes. Which is what you're looking for. She's also teams. a whore too. The whore. Yeah. And then she's back with she's uh she's like back and forth between Gambit and Magneto. Mm-hmm. But Gambit to find you something cool with <laughs> with uh because X Men Legacy really picked up once mm-hmm. uh Mike Carey left his right. legendary run. Legendary. <laughs> uh and uh that you know that chick Frenzy? Yes. The black chick yeah, yeah. the that's been like a brotherhood of you mutants for a long time. She's with uh Gambit now. All right. That's cool. Which is like it's cool. You might you might see some stunt casting putting Gambit on the Avengers too. Yeah, you know, which would be kind of interesting. Like big names, it's gonna be a big shuffle up. It's gonna be kind of cool. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. You know, I think as long as it's handled better than everybody uh, is, Exanction, then uh, it's got my money. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Andrew, can we get two minutes for a negative zone that we haven't oh, done in a million yeah. years? Yeah. Do you want a sound clip? Uh, if yeah, that's cool, I don't man. Think I have the negative zone sound clip. All right. So we'll just get two minutes on the clock. Yeah, I'll do the sound clip. <laughs> you want me to do? You want me to set my 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 uh, timer? No, I got my. I got my and I got my awesome. inse- I got my inception thing. So uh, this is a bit on the show that we have not done in a while. It's called the negative zone, where we just kind of usually we're very positive, but for once we're gonna rag on something, which is which is something um, a writer that we're both huge fans of, Grant Morrison. Uh, we followed this guy's career since like pretty much almost day one, um, and he's handling action comics, which has in the scope of seven ready? issues. I'm ready. Ready. In the scope one, of seven two, issues, three go. It went from fantastic to mediocre. Yeah, it, dude. This, I, I think I was really impressed with the way that he was addressing the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the blue jeans and t-shirt wearing yeah. uh, Superman, kind of like just a big dumb ox. Uh, and I don't know what's going on with the book now. I, I hate the steel backup features. Yeah, he looks weird. Um, Luther is kind of a joke. Mm-hmm. Bring that could be cool. But I don't think there's enough going. I, I think it just it's so bland. Yeah, there's really nothing much going on in the book. I mean, there's a lot going on in the book, but I feel like it's written from the perspective of something not being like set in stone. You know, where like this is kind of a fill in for whatever DC wants to do. It seems like Grant Morrison has different priorities, i.e., Batman, which is fantastic. Don't take any time away from his Batman. Yeah, writing. I'd much rather him do Batman. Um, and also like Rags Morales, man. Like, what happened? You know, like yeah, there has been a slip in his style. The art goes in and out, and you can tell from like you know, have an awesome few pages in this book, and then towards the end of the book, it's it's not a, it's not up to snuff as like his old stuff. You know, and I always hold no. him up with um, Identity Crisis, yeah, as like the, some Top of the best gosh, stuff he's ever man. done. Um, and like I think he did some fill-ins in Fifty Two. Also, the book is just it's really innocuous dialogue and the costume nowhere. thing was weird yeah this issue um action comics number seven explains why how superman gets that crazy armor costume and why 
because it's in Brain it's Ship and it's a piece of Kryptonian clothing that he puts on and it becomes Kryptonian armor. It's I like, don't get it. And it like chameleon. It's like white at first. He right. puts it on. It turn, takes like the Superman colors. Because he's wearing the T-shirt. Is that what it is? I think so. I think because he's wearing the it's Superman so T-shirt, dumb. it became the Superman costume. I wouldn't be ragging on this book as hard as, I, as we are is if it was... If it wasn't Grant Morrison, yeah, like he should be rocking this fucking book. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's two. That's two. Uh, mm. It's two more pennies than jar. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's just mm. like uh, the artist though on the backup feature is very good. Mm. Oh, we're done. All right. Oh well. All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> is that Inception? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the uh, the building bends. So yeah, no more. <laughs> I I really had a high hopes for the book, and it's just not. I always look forward to look, reading Grant Morrison books, and this is just not up to par. And you know what? I, I, and again, this is the little add-on, which is going to take a few extra seconds. Is I really liked um, Final Crisis because it was so insane that it was great. It, like it was it was Grant Morrison being Grant Morrison being eaten by Grant Morrison. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, and, that's a good point. And this stuff is like it's Grant Morrison kind of on the phone while he's writing with his spare hand. You know. At least, at least from my perspective. But you know, the dude does pound for pound, arguably top three greatest comic book writers of all time. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Especially in the last like you know few years. Yeah, yeah. So shame, 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 shame on you. G Let's uh, talk about comics. Yeah. All right. Can I show you guys something? Sure. It has to do with comics. Uh, I was on BuzzFeed, mm-hmm. and they found there's a DIY superhero in Slovakia. Have you seen this guy? Mm-mm. I'm going to pull him up here. I, can do this. There we I don't have my glasses on. I can't see. There you go. Is he... Uh, wait, 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 wait for it. Oh, there he's go. Batman inside Batman. There you go. Is he a, uh, is he a, like... He's a crime fighter. Is he, like, really a crime fighter? Yes. So he's, like, a real-life superhero in Slovakia. Yes. What's he called? Uh, Batman. Of course. Batman or Batman? Batman. <laughs> Batman. 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 Oh, what terrible. a depressing guy! Look at him. <laughs> he never want to be called that by anyone. And look on his window. He he that he has his like uh like the Batman thing made Batman. out of tape. Well, listen, that's that's awful. I think uh, I think that's all. You Andrew, you may have stumbled upon something that um a dude would never ever want to be called besides a douchebag is. Batman? Hey, this is a really depressing looking guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> did you read Age of Apocalypse? I did. You like it? It was all right. I liked it a lot. It was too. It was. Uh, I talk about that next week. They crammed in so much. All right. Let's, it was a lot. Let's do some comics. Um, <clears throat> we got a couple of books for you this week. Uh, and if you're near a comic book store, pick this one up: The Manhattan Project, number one. What a book by uh, Hickman and Patara. It's out by Image. And uh, take us through this, my uh, my fine feathered friend. Hey, I am feathered. <laughs> uh, it is this wonderful, wonderful story about. Well, the the Manhattan Project itself was a uh american 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 a project when they were developing the atomic bomb the guy across mm. the street was mm. the guy who came up with the prototype oh wow really? yeah yeah he lived across the street oh, watch out for your dog we should uh, um slip this into his uh <laughs> slot his mail slot don't try to kill himself uh <coughs> so that was robert Oppen- uh j robert Oppen- 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 robert robert oppenheimer <laughs> famous uh famous words when he uh he exploded the bomb do you remember um, I have apes. I am, I am become death, destroy destroyer of earth, destroyer world, of the world, worlds, the worlds. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even do it. So. <laughs> wow, which is from uh, the Hindu text. It's, Ex- uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, the story opens up where he's being recruited into this and by this like big burly like like <laughs> Sergeant Rock, way over the top army guy. Yeah, like dudes like strapped. You know, he's got the gun mm-hmm. here. He's got a freaking bandolier around him. Mm-hmm. Big dude. He's like, here's the deal. Like, you're nothing like your brother, right? And he's like, no, don't worry about it. And his brother, uh, which is made up in this in the story, is is Joe Oppenheimer, which who's obsessed with death, and he who's his twin, who's his twin brother, uh, who was equally as smart as him, mm-hmm. but he would cut open people, and uh, he worked in a butcher shop, and they found like 15 bodies, and he wanted to cons- if you consume the flesh, that he absorbed their souls uh-huh. and their intellect and the whole nine. So. The, you're getting those like kind of like uh, cut between those moments, mm. 
and then you're also getting this tour of the facility, which is very BPRD. Right. And in one of the rooms, like locked in a cell, is Einstein, like looking at a big stone monolith, like yeah. 2001 style. And he's like, "Is that?" He's like, "Yeah, we'll worry about him when the time comes." And he looks out. He gives it like a kind of like a coy smile. Like, yeah, he's mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, you will be worrying about me." <laughs> and so they like go into like the main like hall, and then all of a sudden, this friggin' they, this, like all these alarms start going off. The uh, the Japs are attacking. <laughs> and they drop like this gigantic, like jellyfish looking, like mm-hmm. it looks like the, the Japanese flag. It looks, yeah. you know, it's the, you know, the red sun on the white, the white field right. drops down and opens up and all these like samurai robots coming yep. out. Oppenheimer and this dude j- jump on some freaking uh, machine, like, guns. machine guns, yeah. blasting at him and just going nuts and destroy him. And like the, the general's like, all right, no, you did a good job. I want to have a beer with this yeah, guy. guy. And then like one of the robots, he's like, goes to touch the uh, touch Oppenheimer he's like do not touch and he just like slam it's like a little scrawny dude yeah and as the story that like, your story's closing out you it revealed that uh, his brother when he was being transported to the asylum got into a car accident he disappeared he came and murdered Robert Oppenheimer the real Oppenheimer the real Oppenheimer and he took over his personality and ate him and ate him yeah so absorbing his his mm. thing but between because th- like this is the, the the beauty of Jonathan Hickman is he's obsessed with with um with not only science but also like design mm. and he comes from a big advertising background he was an loves, architect yeah architect yeah. yeah so he has like he loves graphs and mm-hmm. symbols so between every few things there's like I think it's the the um the something the Fridman or something like that where it's like it's it's documents that are being talked about the, the text you're reading mm. so one of them was saying how. There was a development uh, how Oppenheimer was able to develop this, these other personalities, mm-hmm. and it was he developed like thirty two, and from there it just went to infinium. Yeah. So yeah. he just constantly. So he's, you see the next the the very last panel is him ready to do his job, and he's surrounded by these ghosts of different Oppenheimers, mm-hmm. like the liar, the destroyer, yeah. the world breaker, and all this. It's such a great fun idea. The great thing about Hickman, he doesn't tell you anything about the books going into him, yeah. especially these independent stories. And they rock, dude. This was and the the art is amazing. Everything about it was great. This is honestly one of the best. Uh, uh, this is honestly one of the best first issues I've ever read in a, yeah. very, in a very long time. Um, pick it up, everybody. Uh, Manhattan Project. You did a great thing because you said you. I didn't read it yet, and you said you know do yourself a favor, read this, make mm-hmm. your priority. Yeah. I read it within five minutes of when you told me that, and it it was just it was awesome, mind blowing. Yep, I'll never steer you wrong, John. Thanks. Now you got to pick up uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. I don't read it. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> um, do you want to do? We got time for one more. What do you got? One, two, but Good choice. But it's up to you, man. What it, what's more congruent? Nope. All right. Um, I want to talk about the boys. Let's do it, baby. Boys number sixty-four. What um, a book. This is. We are coming to a head with the boys. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, but also beautifully because honestly, this is what payoff comes down to. This is what payoff's all about. Yeah. <laughs> this is really like. This was such a hokey book for so long. It wasn't one of the more mm-hmm. serious Garth Ennis stories. Over the last like ten to fifteen issues, it's really become uh, like I, I'm not gonna say the as greatest preacher, but it's the same quality of storytelling yes. that you're getting in that. Mm-hmm. And this is like the shit is hitting the fan mm-hmm. in every way, shape, and form. Like you've got the butcher; he's ready for his confrontation mm-hmm. between the seven. They weren't really didn't, they didn't want to do this yet, right? But they're you know this the hands were forced. What's his what's his what's the dude's name? The Samaritan, the Homelander, the Homelander, yeah, yeah. the Homelander who's like the Superman scumbag, uh, who is essentially an evil Superman who eats babies and uh, raped, had a hand in nine eleven. He raped yeah. he raped the, the butcher's wife and got her pregnant. Yes. And he had to kill yeah. the super baby, um, which is like his first mm-hmm. encounter. Butcher's first encounter with like superhumans, right? Um, so he's always had his grudge with it. They friggin' killed the butcher's dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're now like he's uh, the homelander has gotten all of the psychopathic, religious zealot mm-hmm. superheroes, and they're attacking Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. And Butcher is like, screw this, walking off into the mm-hmm. sunset. I am gonna go fight this dude. Well, he the the, the culmination of this is Butcher. It's almost like a suicide run mm-hmm. where they have the entire army is on the boy's side now, and they've given command to Butcher. Yes, and he's saying like, you know what? They're locked up in the White House. I'm going in. I'm he's taking a baseball bat. Even he's going before in. that was the thing. The, the conversation with Vote American. True. Right. I mean, 
go into within that. this issue. Yeah. Um, so Homelander shows up at Von American's headquarters and uh, the main guy sitting there and he just turns around and he's like, look, if you're going to kill me, just kill me. And, you know, and Homeland is completely full of rage and the guy's like covered in like, blood, covered in blood. Uh, Homeland is covered in blood. He's like, um, he's like, you're not even scared. He's like, I have nothing to be afraid of. Like, Vought has never this. Yeah. Whoever this guy is, he has never expressed any emotion. Mm-hmm. He is, you know, you're pretty much. Assuming this guy is going to be the ultimate threat in the story. He's the ultimate corporation. Yes. You know, like he's the ultimate, like, nameless corporation. He's the faceless boss. Because no one knows who he is. No one knows who he is. And he is so, he stared down Homeland, who's arguably the most powerful thing on the planet, and said, Look, if you're going to kill me, kill me. I might as well jump out the window. And Homeland I'll save leaves, the trouble. Yeah. Like, Homeland leaves out of frustration and reads his body language and his heartbeat and says, Like, I can't believe you're not even scared. Like, it's your blood pressure is perfect right now. And the dude's just like, I hope what comes next is either the end of it or something good is yeah. happening, you know? Yeah, because no one, yeah. this is like pure, like no one has planned mm-hmm. for where we're at right now. Well, the card, the cards are in the air too, because I really like the reveal on this issue because I didn't expect it at all. Where um, uh, Mother's Milk is kind of discovers that it might not be Homeland putting this all together and yeah. and the, 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 the compound V thing and all this stuff might have something to do with a reveal coming next issue about Black Noir who is not mentioned at all in the past few issues who has not shown up in the past few issues who is a complete mystery of the seven and he might be an alien. Yeah, well, That's my two cents. <laughs> is it an alien? Yeah. Well, Black Noir is the, is the, uh, is the Batman analogy in mm-hmm. this storyline. Uh, all he is is a dude mm-hmm. covered in, in entirely black, like Spider Man. Yeah. You know, no features, nothing. Uh, we know that he barely ever talks. Mm-hmm. Um, that he can't fly a plane. Yeah. Well, They've tried. I and, think that's gonna get worked into the next issue. And the weirdest thing also is, which they revealed a couple of issues ago, they didn't reveal it. They revealed. Re- Huey revealed it to the rest of the crew that uh, basically Black Noir came up behind him, stuck a finger up his ass, and uh, yeah, <laughs> said, said "Good soldier." Yeah. <laughs> and walked off. So like, yeah, and somewhere mm. amongst all this, there's something very bad about to happen with Black Noir. Yeah. That, we don't know where it is. It's the real. I'm I'm thinking like, I'm going with the alien thing because it ex- it explains the probe in Huey's butt. And it also mm. explains the uh, why the jet's blowing up, kind of, because, like, what if he's, like, the super technological being from outer space? Brainiac. I still can't believe... Fran- Brainiac. I still can't believe Frenchie lost his arm. Frenchie lost his arm, and he's all right, though. Everybody on the team is still alive. And I just love that last yeah. smile of him walking in, like, Butcher walking to the White House, just like, you know, what was, what was the line? He's like, you can't get a final fucking superhero wing. That's he's three. Gonna be, <laughs> he's going to be up against, it's going to be four, too. He's going to be up against, oh, uh, he's going to be up against some altogether other shit. Yep, all, some other shit all together. And the next issue's called My Name is Michael Caine. Yep. Michael <laughs> Caine. I can't wait. This dude, yeah, mm-hmm. I really, like, the boys has catapulted mm-hmm. to, like, the top of my stack when it comes out. Absolutely. Um, it's what I want out of Garth Ennis. Uh, I, this is, this is why I became such a fan of Garth Ennis. Mm-hmm. The dude writes some of the toughest inter- individuals out there. Does great conflicts, just a mm. rockin', rockin' book. It's such, it's, it's, it's his great take on superheroes. Seven it's issues good. left. That's it. Seven issues left is good. This book has probably gone on the radar of a lot of people. People have dropped it and picked it up. When it gets collected into like a giant volume, I suggest to everybody to pick yeah, it up, man. It's fantastic. If you, Definitely. if you like superhero comics, if you like awesome crime and and brutal violence, and if and this book is also perfect for the the, the weirdos that. Um, hate superhero comics also and want something different. Yes. You know, because I understand a lot of people can't get into the superhero thing. My girlfriend's one of them, but you know, it's not because she hates corporations. It's because it's not for her. So this is for, I feel like both, you know, you don't want the, the mega crossover. You don't want yeah. Superman saving the day. You want dudes dressed in black beating the crap out of Superman. And that's what this is. You know, and it's, and it just has that same beautiful mm. Garth and his personality by dudes hanging out. There's a lot of like his themes are always about like yep. brotherhood for the most part. Chilling. Yeah. Grabbing a beer. Grabbing a beer and just relaxing. Exactly. Which is what we're doing tonight. Yes, we are. All right. So uh, I guess that wraps up this episode of Behind the Counter. My apologies for uh, the shortness of it, but it was jam-packed with awesome. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian. All right, PPIG. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. What happened to the freestyle? All right, good night. I dropped too many F-bombs.